Well, my name is Ramona DeGraff and presently I'm living back in my home territory of Cowichan, uh, based in Mill Bay. And uh, I'm a marine biologist and for the last eight years I've been focusing primarily on a BC-wide science program to document and protect beach spawning forage fish habitat. I started a citizen science group called the BC Shore Spawners Alliance and I'm the scientist in charge. Uh, Mama Smelt. I am training teams of local people to follow the protocols that I follow in order to determine the spawning areas for these very, very important feeder fish. What I do with them is make sure that over a course of six to 12 months, they get the techniques down, uh, that they're learning the skills so that we can build local capacity to steward and monitor our beaches on behalf of the beach spawners. They collect the samples for me and with me and then I process all the samples back at my lab together with um, my uh, um, co-founder uh, Dan Pentilla from Washington State. Okay. So yeah this is much more than just a pretty beach. These shorelines are critical fish habitat. In the United States, they are classified as critical wild salmon and critical beaches for killer whales. Critical habitat. Oh, we got a lot to learn in Canada, don't we? <laughs> what is the value of these beaches, say how sound beaches, to predatory fisheries, to Chinook, to coho? Well, if 50% of the diet of adult Chinook is sand lance, you tell me what the value of these beaches is. <laughs> What I think we need to do is engage the public in a way that they appreciate the ecological benefit of natural shorelines, which includes the back shore, which may be someone's front lawn if they own shoreline property, as well as the beach environment and the shallow subtidal. This area of real estate and foreshore has a lot of attractive qualities for people, both for private enjoyment, commercial, now industrial. Now the Lenfast group did this huge global analysis that actually forage fish are worth more if we keep them in the ocean. Well, duh. <laughs> but, okay, 37% of the world's fisheries are on forage fish, and that's a disaster, right? Because of the disconnect between understanding that the land actually builds beaches. So the eroding landforms, and eroding used to be a dirty word, uh, eroding landforms, bluffs and low banks, high banks, actually build the beaches we love to walk on. If people understood that three of the most important feeder fishes or forage fishes in the Strait of Georgia spawn on these beaches, and these feed salmon, and these little fish are uh, fed upon by our favorite birds, uh, by whales, like humpback whales. When I studied them in Massachusetts, they were feeding on sand lance all day. Um, surf smelt, how important they are for cutthroat. I think if people understood all of the amazing uh, ways that these shorelines actually benefit us by providing the fuel for the food web that we'd love to enjoy from our beautiful homes or our beautiful shoreline coastal living, I don't think people would be as hesitant to understand and protect the nature, the natural part of the beach. So the female smelt on feeling these finer pebbles, we call these pea. So it's like frozen peas, about the size of frozen peas, okay? But it's actually the mix, so it's the nursery mix that the sandy beach babies, I call them, need. So just like salmon, when the eggs are put into the rivers, the uh, embryos then fall down in between the larger pebbles, right, and gravels within the streams, and the embryos are protected. Same deal with smelt. So if you have a mix, this would be like about grape size, and now we're getting into, you know, kind of like kiwis and things. The smaller pebbles fall in between those spaces, and the embryos are attached. Now sand lance, the females come in, they dig pits with their bodies, 
squiggling and squiggling in about 50 to 100, making a pit about the size of a dinner plate. Lay their eggs in there. The males release their sperm. And then the fertilized embryo is sticky. And it rolls around and it gathers sand grains and pebbles and puts on its weight belt that way. I find about 75% of the communities that I work with, the local municipalities very much embrace this idea of how hard our shorelines are working. About 25% of the municipalities, there's a lot of pushback because the people are worried that it means that they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't put up a seawall, or they can't do all these things, and it's their beach or their property. It's not an either-or situation. It doesn't have to be their values versus the ability of Surf Mountain and Pacific Sandlands to spawn. We're pretty convinced that walking along the beach like this is not a huge issue. <coughs> Digging up, probably a bigger issue. So uh, I went to a, a, a beach the other day on North Pender and the kids have built all these beautiful sandcastles and things. I'm thinking, well, if the embryos were there, they were now exposed. And, but, you know, the tide might come up and the embryos might bury again. The biggest impacts are driving. Driving on the beaches, um, that's, that's the end. Um, and of course, there's other things we'll talk about uh, with the hard armoring, the hard, hard armoring of shorelines. So we can find a way to make sure that our beaches function as well as we get the enjoyment that we're paying for when we buy these properties. So, but I think it has to start with people, first of all, knowing about these feeder fish that they knew nothing about. I mean, British Columbia, we know a lot about herring. But where's the information and, and the enjoyment of surf smelt? Well, we have commercial fisheries for surf smelt. We have a, still a large active recreational fishery for surf smelt. But why don't we know more about these fish? Well, we don't have the capacity in our government agencies to study surf smelt. Pacific Sandlands, absolutely no attention paid to them whatsoever. And they are the most important fish in the Northeast Pacific. And that's not me, that, you read that in books. Pacific sandlands is the most important feed fish in the Northeastern Pacific. So I think what we need to do is take our love for herring and love all the forage fish and just say, hey, we can help the smelt by learning to understand a little bit better. And yeah, it's kind of awesome that they spawn on this beach, but it might be annoying for someone that it's spawning on their beach because now, they're told that they can't put a piece of equipment on the beach to help build their seawall or something. Well, I think we just need to work around that as people and be reasonable. If we understand the linkage between the beach and that salmon on your barbecue or that surf smelt in your frying pan or that resident killer whale who eats Chinook and 50% of the diet of the Chinook on Sandlands, I think we can easily come to solutions. I have this very strange specialty, right? So I'm the only biologist in the province who does this because I'm the only one trained from Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. So wherever I can go to assist in a process to keep the Strait of Georgia, the Salish Sea functioning, if I think about how hungry killer whales can get in a day if they don't get their 3,000 kilos of food and how hungry a herring can get, because even herring eat sand lance, uh, imagine if we don't think about taking care of habitats for spawning, just like we take care of salmon habitats for spawning, imagine how much hungrier things could get. So that's my motivation, is to get plugged in locally, see what you need, how I can help, give you some science advice, build that local group of people who treasure their, their jewel or their you know, beautiful um, local waters, and see how my tiny little expertise can help keep the sound functioning and, and all those animals fed. <coughs> yeah, actually, because that was a, that was the horizontal surface. Actually, That's right. the slope is this way, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. now I'll give you some more now. No, we are, we are supposed to use all of it now. What? We are supposed to feed. Really? All right. So now yeah. you can kind of see you're getting. But why? Why doesn't it really you know, matter? We do a stuff? bit more. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? I'm just, just, just a matter of, uh, of yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait, do that. Oh, right. wait. Wait. Okay. I don't know how to get two scoops okay. out. 
Come on, darling. Keep winnowing the same the same pace and everything you do.